In the final tutorial, I will cover the basic overview of Hammer Source. This is going to be a crash course in the interface and how to navigate and how to get comfortable around Hammer Source. So let's begin. First, you need to launch Steam. Then, if you navigate on the library, and here I have Left 4 Dead 2 authoring tools, Left 4 Dead 1 authoring tools, and Source SDK. If you don't see these, just open up tools, and here you'll have a list and you can just right click and add to favorites so you'll just have these always at the top if you are wanting to create maps for Counter-Strike, Source, Half-Life 2, Episode 1 or 2, Portal, Day of Defeat you need to select Source SDK if you are wanting to create maps for Left 4 Dead 1 or 2 you need the authoring tools so I'll be working with Left 4 Dead 2 authoring tools but know that the interface and the basic functions are almost identical so I'm going to launch the authoring tools and just double click on the Hammer World Editor. Once you have it launched, just go up to File, click on New, and you'll have your four viewports. We're not going to go in, into depth about each specific function that's inside the editor. This is going to be an overview, and once we begin creating environments, then we'll begin to dissect and go into more of the functionality of each tool. So let's begin at the very top. You have your File, Edit, Map, View, Tools, Instancing, Windows, and Help drop-down menus. The first thing that you want to do is you want to set. Under Map, you want to make sure that you have Snap to Grid turned on, and you have Show Grid turned on. Next, you'll notice that you have Grid Settings. You can increase or decrease your grid, as well as Units. Uh, keep Units to None. In later tutorials, we'll cover Scale, but you don't need to go into Inches, Feet, or Inches. Just keep the units under none and grid settings you have your bracket keys this becomes very important when you create environments inside hammer is to be able to increase and decrease your grid so the bracket keys is the first shortcut that you want to know on the bottom here you will notice that you have snap on grid and right now it says 16 if I increase it goes up to 32 64 and so on and if I bring it back down it goes all the way to 1. The common grid type when you are beginning to create your environments when you are blocking in your maps you want to keep it at 16 or 32. When you are detailing you want to bring it back down to 8, 4, 2, sometimes 1 but majority of the time you want to keep your environments, your BSP brushes on the grid and you want to have them snap to the grid spaces. So that is why it's very important when you go under map making sure that you have your snap to grid and show grid turned down and the bracket keys are your commonly used increase and decrease grid functions under view you have your screen elements you can turn these on and off I usually keep all these on control A becomes often a very important function when you are working on your viewports and you either moved or resize some of the viewports and by pressing control A or going up to view auto size for views all these four views get auto sized in their equal sized windows next we have our various 3D views here but instead of going up to the view and turning them on here if you go into the perspective viewport which is right here which is the black one because we don't have any objects all we see is the black void if you go on the camera you left click on the camera here you're able to select change your, your perspective into orthographic viewport or you can go back and choose any of the various options under 3D. You can have wireframe, flat, textured, so we can't see anything because we don't have any objects. But let me create a simple object and here we have our object inside. Right now we see the wireframe but if we go under flat or textured we can see the textured view or the wireframe or the flat as well as other options. I do not use 3D Light Preview because it's buggy so avoid using 3D Light View as well as Ray Trace Preview. Do not use these two. Under 3D Lighting Grid you are able to see your objects and how detailed they are uh, when there's going to be light and rendering shadow maps as well as lighting maps. This becomes important when we are optimizing but in the beginning of your creation you'll be using 3D flat, textured and shaded textured polygons. I usually leave it on 3D textured or shaded textured polygons 
this is all you need. Next, if we go under View, we have Center Views on Selection or Center 3D Views on Selection. These are very important and another shortcut that you want to know. So if I navigate away from my objects, Control E, which is View, Center View on Selection, allows me to center on my selected objects. This auto centers on all three in orthographic viewports. So this becomes very important. So remember, Control E, Centers View on Selection. The rest we will cover when we are creating our environments. Under Tools, these are your geometry, your BSP modeling tools. This is what you'll be often using and going up to this menu when you are creating your brushes. One thing that you want to make sure that it's checked on is the texture lock. There will be times when we'll switch this off, but majority of the time you want to have this checked on. Further down we have various transform, snap to grid, alignment options, uh, but we will cover those more in depth when we are creating our map. Instancing becomes important when you are working on large environments and you have various map files being referenced into a single map file that you are working here. And under Window we have other various options. One other important option that you want to take a look at in the drop down menu is under Tools, Options. Here you can configure various options when you are configuring Hammer as well as General. Here you have various undo levels. Under 2D views you have various options for your grid, 3D views, change your navigation preferences, forward speed, or reverse your mouse y-axis. So the main ones you want to take a look at are general, 2D view, and 3D view. But in the beginning I would avoid going into materials and build programs or changing any of these settings. It's very unlikely that you'll even go into build programs or game configurations unless you are a more advanced user. Next, below our drop down menu, we have the toolbar. Most of these functions are going to be discussed when we are creating our map, so I will not cover any of these right now. Uh, we do have our smaller grid and our larger grid here in the toolbar, we, but we won't be using that because we have our bracket keys. Here on our left hand side, we have map toolbar. This is going to be most commonly used functions when you are switching between creating your BSP brushes, placing lights, applying textures, applying decals, using the clipping tool, your vertex tool. These are going to be very often used when you are creating new maps. So the first one we have is the selection tool. This just simply selects our objects, including entities, including our models, and brushes. The second one is the magnify. I rarely use this. I use the scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. And the magnify tool works in orthographic viewports, but again, use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Next one we have is the entity tool. This is where entities get placed inside your map. Things such as lights, models, and various gameplay elements are done by placing the entity tool. So once you have this selected, notice that here where it says categories and objects, this changes. Under categories now we have the entities and we have what type of entity you want to select. So things such as player positions, the lights, various gameplay options are all selected through this drop down menu when you select the entity tool. Next is the block tool. Once we select this under here under categories we see that we have primitives and under objects we have various types of primitives that we're able to create. Now block is what you'll be using most of the time so just stick with the block but if you want to experiment with others do so but We'll go into that more into depth during the later tutorials. Next we have the toggle texture application. Here once you click you have a face edit sheet pop up. This is where you are able to select textures and apply to your objects inside the viewport. You are only able to apply your textures only onto BSP geometry. So if you have a an entity which is let's say it's a prop static which is just a basic model, a 3D model you cannot apply textures to your entities or to your models. The only thing you can apply textures to are your BSP brushes which we see here. So we can click on browse, you have your, your filter where you can just search for various words such as let's say if we type in wall, we can select and here we can apply. 
Now we'll get into actual application at a later tutorial but the face edit sheet is accessed through toggle application texture by turning on and off we are able to modify our materials and select various textures to use. Next we have applying the current texture. If we navigate here on the side you also get to see that we have texture group, current texture, we can also access the face edit sheet and go into the browsing texture through here. So we have various options. We can open the toggle application here and then go to browse or we can just navigate onto our right side, click on browse and jump right into the textures menu. And if we select the texture, select the brush and we can just apply that texture to the entire brush. The only difference is, is when you go under texture application you have scale options, you have shift options, you have light map scale options. So this gives you a more direct use of how you want your textures to appear as well as changing textures. Next we have our decals. Decals and overlays are textures that get applied on top of other textures. So overlays and decals offer an extra detail to be added on top of other textures. So to give an example of how this actually looks, let's go under overlays, let's go under browse and under filter we can type in overlay. Let's select a simple sign and with my overlay selected just click and we can apply and we can see here that it just adds an extra detail and breaks up the repeated texture that we have on our wall. Next we have our clipping tool. Clipping tool is very useful when we want to take our brush and we want to split it in half or we want to cut it at a certain angle. So to give you an example we select our brush, select the clip tool and we just simply choose where the cut is going to happen and we just press enter. There are various options we can choose to keep one side, we can delete one side or we can keep both sides and just make a cut. And again I'll go more into depth at how to actually use this to create your geometry. And last on the map toolbar we have the vertex tool. Vertex tool you can manipulate your vertices on your BSP geometry and modify your object by creating slopes, by creating more complex shapes in your BSP geometry. On our right hand side we have our various selection options. We have our texture groups which I covered a little earlier. We can browse, we can replace our various textures. We have visibility groups. You have Hammer Editor already creating automatic groups for you. You can also do this manually. We will go into depth more how to do that yourself. Cordon, we'll cover Cordon a little later as well. This is, comes very useful when you are trying to compile a specific map location instead of the entire map. So you want to see what one room looks like as opposed to the entire map and waiting for a compile to finish. And last we need to cover the most important function is how to navigate inside the viewports. To navigate in your orthographic viewports to move around that specific viewport all you need to do is hold down the space bar key and as you hold down the space key left click and hold and just navigate and move around. This works for all the orthographic viewports. If you want to zoom in just simply use the mouse wheel zoom in and zoom out and again if you select your object and you press control E you will center on your selected object in your orthographic viewports. Now in the perspective viewport we have our mouse wheel that can zoom in and zoom out. If you hold down the spacebar key and left click you can look around. If you hold down the spacebar key and right click and hold you're able to pan around and if you hold down the spacebar key and left mouse and right mouse click at the same time, go left, go right, zoom in and zoom out. The best way to navigate inside the perspective viewport is if you hit the Z key and just tap it once. Here you activate the fly around inside the viewport and the way you navigate inside the viewport when you tap the Z key is 
the ASWD keys just like you would when you are playing a first person shooter and as you navigate around you use your mouse to look around. This is by far the best way to navigate inside the viewport, inside the perspective viewport. So hit the Z key to exit. You can work on your orthography viewports and then when you need to go into perspective viewport you hit the Z key again and you navigate around. If you want to maximize any of the viewports shift to Z. Then you can click on Z again. This allows you to navigate around the viewport. Hit Z again to exit the viewport and then shift Z to go back into your four viewports. So this covers Hammer Source Crash Course on the basics of the interface in Hammer Source.